Good afternoon, good afternoon everybody, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome from the Eastern Cape, Amakala Private Game Reserve. What a beautiful afternoon it is, nice and warm. And you're joined by myself, Eric and Morgan behind the camera and we're going to be your eyes and ears this afternoon on a lovely, lovely, warm, warm afternoon here. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping and the Impala are doing their thing. Like I said, the birds are doing their thing. We've got some fiscal. Is it a fiscal flycatcher? It sounds like one. I could be wrong. It could actually well be the common fiscal. Um, but uh, nonetheless, he's making a noise over there. Now, we stopped at this particular herd of Impala as we came past. As uh, the male was chasing some, or well, he was chasing somebody around. We couldn't see exactly who it was, if it was potentially a young male that he was possibly chasing out. And um, I was trying to do some calculations and it would actually work out sort of well. Now, the males don't want, especially the, the, the male in charge here, He's not going to want any other males uh, in this harem of his. Obviously, there he is, giving us a bit of a look. Is he looking at us? I don't think so. It is very bright. I mean, he's struggling to actually see. I know he wasn't looking at us. He was looking at the bush. Now, we are obviously in April. And uh, a lot of these Impala babies were born sort of October, October time. So they would have been, uh, if they were born, it does sort of make sense that they, the males, some, some of the males get kicked out around about now, because October, November, December, January, February, March, April. That's about seven months, generally after about eight months uh, in the harem. Of, yeah, basically at eight months old a young ram can easily get pushed out by that big ram over there Gail, hello, hello, good afternoon we hope that you are doing very, very well and ready for our sunset safari now, obviously this is a live and interactive show so we would very, very much like to hear from you and there's ways that you can get involved in the conversation. You, if you are watching from our YouTube channel, you can make some comments, ask some questions in the comment section underneath the live stream. If you're watching from our website, you can also register to make some comments and ask some questions. If not, you can also go over to Twitter, where you can also get involved uh, using the hashtag Wild Earth tag to get involved. And like I said, we do love to hear from you. We'd very much love for you to ask some questions and uh, make some comments. Get involved in our afternoon safari. Lucy, we have between 20 to 28, if I'm not mistaken, different type of antelope on this property. Some very free, well, some we see a lot and some we don't really see at all. But we know that they're here because we see their tracks or their footprints and we see their, well, we see their poo lying around all over the reserve. But uh, we have a, a decent, decent amount of animals on this property and majority of the antelope on this reserve are also antelope that would have occurred here naturally. When I mean occurred here naturally, it means that long, long ago, long, 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 when Africa was just animals, they used to, animals, well, the antelope used to live in this particular area. If I can name 18, well, 
Okay, well, challenge, challenge accepted. We're going to start, obviously, with Impala. We've got Impala, we've got Red Heart to be us, we've got Blackville to be us, we've got Waterbuck, we've got Bushbuck, we've got the Kudus, we've got the Steenbuck, we've got Daker, we've got Springbuck, we've got Blessbuck. That's 10. Uh, hmm, what else? What else? What else do we have? What have I not not mentioned i know there's there's a few there's definitely a few that i have not mentioned oh james has maybe got me here he's maybe got me what else do we have uh, <laughs> i may be <laughs> i'm struggling to actually find some more but i know we do have there's gemsburg okay that's 11. gemsburg uh fellow deer no, we don't have fellow deer. No, 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 we don't. Fe <laughs> Sorry, not fellow deer. Mountain reed buck, that's 12. Uh, Inyala, that's 13. Uh, I said it hard to be didn't I? Uh, uh, what's on Carnarvonale? Carnarvonale, no. We've said all of those ones. 13. I'm five off. I'm sure I'll think of five antelope throughout the course of this afternoon that I have not mentioned, but I'm very, very close. And our Impala have moved off. Oh. Hey, all right. Well, we're going to send you over to have a look at the weather that will definitely give me a little bit more time to try and wrap my head around all of these antelope that we have. <laughs> Apparently it's going to rain here today. This is not something that I believe to be true. There is an elephant and it is crossing in line with the car just in time for you to see my winning smile. And Mpo's thumb. Quickly, not Mpo, Panda, sorry. Panda Gilbert Musesani Tagudzwa The Billions Glitz. Not necessarily in that order on camera. Anyway, nice to be talking to you from the Safari Sentinel, the brand new Toyota Land Cruiser, which will never ever break down because it is a Toyota. And we're looking at a little herd of elephants, which consists of two plus a couple off towards the right, which we can't see. Please do talk to us, remember? Hashtag Wild Earth on Twitter. Get hold of us on YouTube or on our website. It'd be lovely to hear from you. Just going to go forward a bit tremendously quiet morning this morning and so it'd be nice to have a couple of elephants and other animals during the course of the afternoon now we don't normally do this but because these two people have been with each other for so very long um, I'm going to wish a happy anniversary to <laughs> to Pat and Ari Williamson or Williamson Will Willemson, Willemson, uh, because they've been married for 52 years. So, you know, you deserve a huge amount of credit for that. My wife and I have managed four years so far. 52 seems like a very long way away <laughs> for her, mostly. <laughs> well done and congratulations to you and thank you for watching Wild Earth. Right, let's go back to the bush here where there is an elephant's belly visible. Can you see it, Panda? You can just see the tail and the underside of the belly there swinging in the bush. There he's moving. It's all action here. So a very small herd of three elephants feeding through the woodland. Hello Camilla. Apparently you love elephants and you want to know how far they walk every day. I, it very much depends where they live, Camilla. If they live in Namibia, they're going to walk sometimes tens of kilometers a day because food and water are very sparsely interspersed. 
Whereas in an area like this, when the weather is like it is and when the amount of food around is like it is, they could probably walk less than a kilometer on some days. So it really does depend on where they live. Gosh. Well, that was a very brief and slightly disappointing elephant sighting. Let's go forward. Maybe they'll pop out into a slightly more open area. My radio seems to have just reset itself. We are on channel four, aren't we, Panda? The other nice thing about this Land Cruiser is that it seems to have a newer starter motor than most of the others, which means that it doesn't go when you start it. Which, you know, you know, sensitive sighting can be a little disturbing. This one's as nice and quiet. Now the elephants have gone off down into the gully there. So I think we're going to have to carry on for now. Hello Simon, you're seven years old and you're wondering why young boy elephants chase everything. I keep forgetting that this is a kid, we're in the kids drive, of course. Uh, Simon, it's a good question, but I think it can probably be answered by thinking about, there are the elephants, by thinking about yourself and your friends at school. And what you will remember or what you will know, how's that panda? Dreadful. Back a bit. A little bit back. Say when. I've now got stuck already. Oh, sorry, Simon. I'll get back to you now. How's that? So, Simon, boy elephants are like human elephants in so much as they all think that they are very strong and very fast until they're about 10, and then reality starts to dawn. And so, young boy elephants. Uh, they also like to wrestle, just like young human beings. Uh, they like to test each other's strength against each other. They like to irritate their sisters. They like to irritate each other. And so exactly like human boys, they just enjoy being rambunctious, chasing things, irritating other members of the herd, testing themselves out. And they, you know, like I say, they think that they're the fastest and strongest things in the world. And then when they get a bit older, they realize it's a bit more complicated than that. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
So you can see that's a cow from here. And you can see that's a cow by the fact that she's got a square head. You can see a very obvious square head. And a straight back. And a bull of that age you'd expect to have a slightly more concave or hollow back and a rounder head. That said, some bulls have got squarer heads than others, and so it's not necessarily an infallible way of discerning the gender of an, ele of an elephant. I think infallible is not a very good kid's word, but maybe it is. It's a good word to learn. Infallible means undisputed, I suppose. Indisputable. So I think from here we'll probably move on. There's a Franklin shouting about something just further up this road, so we're going to see what that's about, and then go down towards the south. We've left that area where the Impala are, we're on a bumble now, and we're, we are on a quest to find some more planes game. Another antelope that I did not mention earlier in our account was an Irland. So we're now at 14, we still need four to go. I'm thinking long and hard, but I fear, I fear we may not make it. But we'll try, we definitely try. It's still, I, I'm still almost certain there's some, there's a few more that I haven't, that I've missed, that I haven't thought of. Minus two for fat, no, absolutely not. I got minus two. I need all the, ca all the, all the counting that I can do. Oh, there's a monkey. Just enjoying the shade, it's very far. That's something we actually don't see a lot of at the moment is uh, vervet monkeys. We have, a, we have them, but they are rather skittish. Obviously not as skittish as our baboons. Our baboons are probably more skittish than our vervet monkeys. But the vervet monkeys, you know, most of the time you actually only see them around the large environments. Um, and if you do see them in the wild, then you only see like a few of them. They don't necessarily like to show you their whole body and so they'll only give you a little bit of their face you'll see just that little black face and they disappear but believe it or not you know as small as they are vervet monkeys are dangerous vervet monkeys are very very dangerous they got long teeth and uh, they've got an attitude problem they really do you know if you tease a vervet monkey, it's going to tease you back. And in some cases, I remember when I was studying, uh, there were a couple of uh, ladies on my course, and those ladies were terrorized by those vervet monkeys. Immensely, <laughs> you know? Like, and they know it. It's, it's almost like vervet monkeys know when you are a, a, a man or when they know that you are a woman. And I f they feel like, obviously, women are definitely sometimes a little bit more scared of vervet monkeys than men are. But then there's also men that are also scared of vervet monkeys. I know a good few that are. Um, and uh, they take advantage of that. Um, you want to climb like that, Simon. I'm, think, I'm assuming he's referring to the monkeys. Yes, I mean indeed, monkeys are very, very cool. You know, it, it's always fascinated me how they manage to climb so quickly through the, the uh, Virgilia Karoo trees. And the Virgilia Karoo trees, I mean, some of the thorns are about that long. Very long, very, very sharp. And they grow on the, not really on the tree stump itself, but a lot of the branches that you'll find the monkeys hanging out on. And, uh, you know, they somehow manage to avoid them. I don't know how they do it. 
you know, I really don't know how they do it, but they somehow do it. So, yes, I'd also like to be able to climb in a tree like a monkey, scurry up all the way to the top, scurry up all the way down to the bottom. Highly, highly, highly intelligent creatures they are. They really are. You know, uh, I've always said it before, and it's just something that it always boggles my mind that they have a specific call for specific groups of predators. But then, to better that, they have specific calls for in those specific groups of predators. They'll it'll always end with like a specific key, or it will start with a specific tune. Uh, and then there's there's variations for lions, for leopards, for cheetahs. I mean, it's it's really, really, really cool. So they have, they uh, no, they're really sophisticated in in the communication side, but also they can recognize individuals and the tone of voice. So you know how you can recognize mom's voice, you can recognize dad's voice, you can recognize your cousin's voice, your brother's voice, your sister's voice, or your friend's voice, you know? The same with monkeys, with vervin monkeys. They can identify each other, even from rival and enemy troops. So if you say there's a troop on this side and the dune thicket and then there's a troop on the open flats, you know, and every now and then, occasionally, let's say once a month or once every two months, the troops meet up. They clash with each other, you know, troops going over the boundaries. Those troops will be able to recognize the voices of other monkeys and troops. And that's very clever because you'll find that with monkeys and well, with humans and with monkeys, there's always somebody who tries to sneak their way into, well, behind enemy lines in a sense. And uh, if they can be recognized, they can be reprimanded. And uh, yeah, monkeys, when they fight, is not normally a pretty thing. It, it tends to get very, very violent, very gory. Uh, sometimes lots of blood can be involved. But uh, like I said, monkeys have very, very sharp teeth and uh, they uh, deliver a very nasty bite. Not something that you want to get caught up in. But vivid monkeys are cool. And uh, we get two main types of... Oh my goodness, sorry, I've just been distracted. There was a dark back weaver that just flew off there. He's gone now. And, uh, that was pretty cool. I haven't seen one. That's the first one of the season. Been waiting to see them. I've heard them. I heard one. Uh, I was certain I heard one this morning. But uh, yeah, they definitely don't get seen very, very often. They're also very elusive birds. But uh, that was pretty cool. Distracted me from my monkey talk. And I think, yeah, up here in the dune thicket, I've only really noticed one troop of baboons, well, not baboons, one troop of monkeys here, and uh, another two or three down in the basin. Oh, how time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> oh. Wild Earth is turning 17 and we want to make the years count. <laughs> 17 years of achievements, close encounters and special memories. He's got it, he's got it and he's straight up a tree. Come along as we reflect on our top 17 greatest moments. Here's to more years of connecting you to nature. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
Right, so we've done the dark backed weaver call. Ooh, some more elephant tracks here. Uh, and some of you will have missed out on that. And then I said I would do the bronze winged courser call. And the reason I did that was that the bronze winged courser is also has a call that lends itself to a beat. So let me just quickly do that for you. Field guide, yes. This app is being very glitchy right now. Bronze winged courser, are you ready, Panda? See, you with me. So we've got two nice birds to make a beat. We should send this along to the Kifnis and he will make a beat for us. In fact, I'm actually definitely going to do that. Let's go now to have a look at Steve. Uh, Steve Ovo is on two packs a day Wendy and he's finally managed to find some signal and he's out in the bush. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, my name is Steve. I'm definitely on Two Packs Wendy, and I'm joined by Opa and his daughter on camera. And well, we are out and about to see what we can find for you. And I feel very strange being back in this car because I was in the Safari Central this morning, and first of all, the the keys are on the other side. The clutch is very different, and the well, the bumping is also very, very different. So it's quite funny to be back in this car, which I know intimately. I love you, Wendy, but um, Safari Sentinel really does top the cake when it comes to comfort. But nothing quite goes where this car can go. So our plans for the afternoon were to find some elephants. I think James already found some elephants. So we're just going to come and have a look at one of our watering holes over here called Gowrie Dam. Just see what's happening. We had some lion activity here last night. We had a male lion on the other side of the dam there called the uh, Talamati young male. And we had another male just over here called the Kambula number five male. And uh, we had hoped that they would have interacted with each other, but they didn't. It's actually very disappointing. Not that we need to or expect these animals to fight, but um, when you see lions that haven't seen each other for a while or don't know each other especially males very good chance that they're going to fight hello warren nine years old you want to know if lions want to eat antelopes with big horns well they can um a lot of the time the horns on the antelope are not there for the lion they're there to fight with other males i think i want to go that side of paul i'm just feeling something about Sometimes the horns are there to fight against other males, but yes, sometimes the horns are there to fight and defend themselves against lions. But it works both ways. Um, I've seen uh, lions killed by sable antelope. We've got these big horns that go over like this. And I've also seen lions kill sable. So there's a lot of risks being a lion. And when it comes down to a lion hunting, it will always pick the easiest meal. So it's not going to pick the biggest and the strongest and the animal with the biggest horns. It's going to pick the smaller, weaker and smaller horned animals. Um, but then a pride of lion, they are actually very good at taking down big horned animals together like buffalo. And then we get giraffe. They don't have the big horns. They've got the super big, powerful legs. But it's always risky. It's always risky hunting these big animals okay so here's a nice peaceful moment by the watering hole it's a lovely afternoon lovely autumn afternoon here 
with our male lion lying down right there next to a rock yesterday afternoon. And the other one was behind us. And I don't think either of them even knew the other one was around. Pam, we should have um, one of the camps here called Tambeta has got a little hide. Um, and a lot of lodges in these environments do have hides, bird hides. Um, but there is one at some better house. It's, it's right there by the wallow. But it's not much of a, the, the water point there is not much of a birding hotspot. But I do really enjoy hanging around bird hides. I've been to many. If I go to reserves, even where I live down in the garden route, there's a lot of bird hides there over the estuary and over the wetlands and the lakes. We can go and spend some time with some coffee and some snacks and a good pair of binoculars. Just spend time watching the birds come and go. It is a very, very entertaining experience, very peaceful. And initially, when you enter a bird hide, everyone, you've made a bit of noise and the birds can be pretty quiet. But as you sit and you wait, after a period of time, all of those shy and skulky birds come out. Not like the Egyptian geese, they seem to always be out. James had some action this morning, actually, with the Egyptian goose flying over him at Bufusuk Dam. It was the update on the radio. It sounded quite exciting. Let's go check in with him about his Egyptian goose sighting this morning as he finds himself at another watching hole. You know, when we've resorted to Egyptian geese and hippos, you must know that we're struggling to find big cats, especially when we've resorted to Egyptian geese. Anyway, here's Dewey the Hippo at Treehouse Dam. And he, he is being spectacularly unentertaining. Yes, I am talking about you. I suppose we shouldn't feel like he's obliged to be entertaining. He isn't really, I suppose. Anyway, it's all very peaceful here. A couple of crested Franklins calling up there. <laughs> Hello, Melissa, eight years old. I keep, like I say, I keep forgetting we're in, in the, the kids' drive at the moment, and I said I referred to Wendy as two packs a day, and you want to know what I mean by that. Uh, well, Melissa, this is an important lesson for you. Uh, <laughs> I call Wendy two packs a day because she smokes so much. So when you drive Wendy the car, she belches a whole lot of smoke and it looks like she's smoking cigarettes. And this is an important lesson. If you uh, want to stay healthy for a long time, you don't want to smoke like Wendy has because Wendy is not in a good way. So Wendy two packs a day smokes a lot that's why she's called two packs <laughs> possibly should have explained that more carefully originally okay let's move on from here and see what else we can find along the way quite a quiet afternoon but it's so peaceful and the temperature's really very lovely. 24 degrees, which is mild and pleasant. Probably get a little bit chilly later on, but nothing, nothing too bad. No obviously fresh tracks from this morning for us to follow, so we're just gonna drive around and see what we can find at this stage of the game. We've had hippos, elephants, and that's about all, really. 
Damien, how many bird songs can I whistle? Not many, uh, well not too many. Um, I think the one that I do best is probably the white browed scrub robin. Then I'm not too bad at the pearl spotted owlet. everybody is why you don't call it a grey diker, you call it a common diker. Because that grey diker is very clearly not very grey. I don't believe it. I don't believe this. You won't believe it, Panda. <laughs> but we've just stopped right next to a pearl spotted owl. <laughs> <laughs> I actually can't believe it. Can you see in this marula tree there? How cool is that? It also sounds like there's... What is making that noise? It's the drongo. The drongo next to it's going click. Clicking its beak. That's really cool. I don't suppose you can brighten that up a bit, can you, Panda? And blow out the background. Oh, Schwambiele. Now the drongo is chasing it. Well, that was cool. How's that? <laughs> That's really very cool. Um, let me show you a picture of it quickly because I don't think we've got a great view. Well, Simon, you can call those owls because they they will often come to human beings who are, are pretending to be them, whereas most birds won't. Pearl spotted owlet. Uh, yeah, that's what we were looking at. Is that going to be too bright, Panda? You can manage. There we go. Yeah, that's not bad. That's what we were looking at. And it's these, sorry about the radio. It's these... It's these white dots here that give it the name the Pearl Spotted Owl. Now what I will do is try and call the owl back and let's see if he comes.
And we know, we know warthogs love a good mud wallow. So I, there's, there's no reason why they wouldn't. Sure, there's so much noise, other noise today. We are now about to have a helicopter fly over us. It sounds very, very loud and it's very, very far. So it could possibly be a medivac helicopter. Yuri, we do. We do get big birds that will snatch at the little animals from uh, from the water. Um, a black-headed heron. Those are the snatch artists. Good grief, it is a helicopter. Very, very loud one. Um, the black-headed heron is one that will snatch fish, snatch frogs, snatch small terrapins, uh, mice, birds even out of the water or around the water. I've seen it happen on multiple occasions. Uh, I think I've seen it more with fish and frogs than I have with mice and uh, mice in the field. But I mean, not too long ago, we did manage to get that on form where a black headed heron was waiting and waiting and waiting and eventually came right and managed to snatch a mouse out of the grass. Now we can enjoy the sounds of nature. There is a little breeze that's starting to pick up. But um, yeah, other than that, you know, we do get the giant kingfisher, but uh, we don't get them here. I didn't get the name there, but I did hear Belinda, a wax bull. Wow, wax bulls are very, very nice. Uh, if we can, if we can find one, I'd definitely like to put it on screen for you. Absolutely. You know, I think to this afternoon's quest is to find as many interesting birds as we can. After that dark bag weaver, my interest has been sparked. And there was a greenback camaraptor that was calling in the bush on the opposite side of the dam, but I'm not hearing it anymore. It also sounds a little bit like a, uh, like a cat. Me? Me? They have other calls. That's one of the calls that you will hear. You're not going to call? This bird is not going to call for us. Oh. oh, well. We are going to send you over to Steve, who I believe is also doing some birding. It seems like it's a birding afternoon, birding Wednesdays. Thanks, Eric. Oh, Violet the Wax Bull would be a very special bird to see. Some bushveld chickens. These are little ground birds called Franklins. They are the crested Franklin. They often walk with their tail sort of pulled up like that. And they're unmistakable with their white eye stripe. They're even described as being unmistakable bantam like build. Bantam is a type of chicken. You can see that eye stripe there. We call it a supercilium. If you're looking for the fancy word, but a white eye stripe will do. And these birds are ground nesting, and many of them actually, because we've had extra rain, would have provided more cover, more seeds, more food. Might even breed again. They might even have eggs right now. And obviously everyone's been playing some calls this afternoon. So let's play the Frank and Lynn call. And they actually say Frank and Lynn in the call. Have a listen to my hat. Quite easy to remember, isn't it? I can also hear the arrow marked babblers shouting off to our left hand side. Jack, 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 jack. There they are, Paul, in that uh, red bush willow, the one towards the marula. 
Can you see them? Babla, because they make a lot of noise. Let me see if I can find the call for you. Arrow marked Babla. I'll play it and they might come closer. Okay, well, James has struck it lucky this afternoon and he is surrounded by elephants. Yes, we've had some more elephant luck here. We had one and it disappeared off into the bush. And now we've got a whole lot more, including this young bull who has just found himself something that he wants to eat and he's being very specific. Oh, I think he quite likes the safari sentinel. Hello. This is the safari sentinel. What do you think? Not much. I think the elephant was thinking to itself, it smells very different from the other one. The other one smells like a workshop. This one smells like a new car. Let's just wait where we are. I know this is not the best view, but I think it's a good spot for us. You can see the one just rubbing himself to the left there. Oh, sorry, this chap wants to be in a TV star. You can hear in the background the call of the southern boo boo. Teresa, that's an interesting question, and one that we don't truly know the answer to, but the, I guess the answer is possibly yes. So elephants do seem to select certain plants if they're not feeling particularly well, and the best example I have of that comes from a long time ago, but a friend of mine was watching an elephant that had just lost its tusk, and it was very specifically picking the leaves of, ye of red bush willow. So it was going from red bush willow to red bush willow, pulling the leaves off and then stuffing them into the cavity where the tusk had fallen out. So, you know, the assumption was that that elephant was eating or pushing that, pushing those plants into the hole in order to dull the pain, perhaps. But I think to a certain extent, and this applies to human beings as well before they understand nutrition. If you give a selection of foods to somebody, uh, a young child for example, they first of all just go for what tastes best, so the sugary sweet stuff. But eventually what they'll start to do is select the stuff that's pretty good for them. And that's because the body starts to crave certain nutrients. And you, you'll notice this throughout your life, you'll crave certain things. Now sometimes it's, that's for a, a, like a sugar addiction. If you've got a sugar addiction, you're gonna just crave something sweet because it gives you a, um, a, high, a small high, basically, in your brain. But at other times, you'll maybe you'll want a piece of cheese or a glass of milk because you're, you're actually calcium deficient. Um, or you'll want to eat a steak because you're iron deficient. Something like that. Those are just sort of very basic examples. Now, I imagine that elephants would experience something similar. They, through their experience and their bodies, will learn what foods have what nutrients. And although they're perhaps not consciously deciding, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling so fly, so I should go and eat some silver cluster leaf, they may well be thinking, or may well suddenly think to themselves, oh, I feel like some silver cluster leaf, but not know really why they feel like that. So that's, that's the best answer that I can give you. So I, th I think they probably do select foods dependent on the nutrients that can be offered to their bodies. That is an astonishing picture, Panda, thank you. And he's just picked himself a large piece of 
I think that's probably large fruited bush willow. Very nice. Just, I'm just going to depress the clutch, and then we'll gently ease forward. No, we won't. I'll have to start the car. How's that? Cedric's probably going to fall that one. We're just going to wait exactly where we are. I know that these elephants are walking past us, but there are a whole lot more coming towards us, so I think we'll just wait here for now. And you can hear the, the call of the magnificent Shivambalana. <laughs> Welcome back to those of you who've just joined us. 
We're still sitting with our lovely herd of elephants. I don't want to disturb things by moving the vehicle. Is there anything behind us, Panda? Wait, I, I could just stand up and have a look, couldn't I? Um, yeah, I think we'll just wait where we are for now. It'll be nice to just keep following these elephants because I think they'll end up at that dam. Richard, do you want to know, what was that, why do elephants push over trees? Uh, ele sometimes because they're irritated, Richard. Sometimes just because they can, so you'll find uh, elephant bulls just pushing them over because they feel like it and they want to test their strength. And sometimes it's to get at the fruits and the leaves and the young twigs that are at the tops of the trees. And if they can push a tree over and make it easier for them to access that food source then they'll sometimes do that but it's it's interesting because you'd think you'd ask yourself why they would push a tree over if it wasn't for the purposes of getting food but frequently it does seem to be for just irritation or some other reason here comes the rest of the herd now Right, for you kids, thank you for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow at half past three. And for the rest of you, stick around. This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Good afternoon. Welcome on board the Sunset Safari here after the kids drive where we find ourselves up in the northeast, the Pupusuk watering hole with a heron, a couple of lions just in the distance there. And uh, well, my name is Steve. I'm joined by Bob on camera and his famous little daughter, Teddy Bear. And well, we just pulled up here to the dam to see what was going on. And the boy's like, lion. And there they are, four of them. It's about to go down again. She's about to drop her head. I don't know who they are. Uh, we don't have good signal in that spot. I know that for certain. So we're only going to be able to view them from here. And they look like they've eaten. They've got uh, pretty full bellies. But who they are right now, I couldn't tell you. Don't forget everybody, this is a live and interactive game drive, a safari, and your questions and comments are valuable to us. We'd love to hear from you in the chat. No. On Instagram. No, not on Instagram. I'm making things up today. Uh, on Twitter, that's the one. All important hashtag, Wild Earth. Or the YouTube chat stream. The best ways to go about it. And I know we're not giving you the best views here to tell you who these lions are, but that's what we got to work with at the moment. We will try and reposition in a little while. But I have a very strong feeling we will not be getting signal. Over there. Hello, Maureen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hearing the name Maureen is quite nice actually because my landlady's name is Maureen and I actually need to message her to let her know I'll be home on Saturday. So thank you Maureen for reminding me. 
I remembered last night once I'd switched my phone off, you know, when you're in that half an hour. I switched my phone off an hour before bed, everybody. And I was in that sort of mindset of, I'm now meditating, I'm resting, I'm switching my mind off. It's not the best time to turn the phone on again. We get inundated with information and all sorts of things. So I said, ah, I'll remember tomorrow. And I completely forgot until this very moment, Maureen. So thank you for <laughs> inadvertently reminding me. So, Picky, you reckon the Unkuumas? I was going to lean in that direction. I can't see anybody, but uh, four here. There were five on Sunday, and then one was seen on the dam cam this morning, who someone has told me was Chella, and she was very full. But, um, yeah, very nice to see them. I haven't seen them in their full numbers since last month. They seem to be splitting up quite a lot. It's the same as us trying to find animals at the moment. There's game is quite splintered around so we'll often find our prides splitting up a bit to try and find adequate food oh. Okay, hey, girl, hello to Love and Paul. That's very sweet of you. It's lovely to have the little bear back, the little, uh, my daughter. <laughs> it still gets me every time it pops that out. Many of you probably don't know the story of Paul's little daughter. He's got this lovely teddy bear that you might have seen a moment before when he uh, gave his thumb up that his daughter gave to him and said, Daddy, I want you to... Uh, wear that every day, show it on the show every single day. And uh, how can a father refuse such a request, eh, Mpo? Yeah. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> so some ox peckers flew off there. I'm not sure what they, where they came from. Came from just the side of the dam there. They've landed somewhere over there. Crafty Jacks, it's so peaceful, isn't it? You know, coming up to Bivelswick Dam, we're generally expecting to find a hippo or two and our heron. I'm always hoping to find Ellie's when I come here. It's been quite some time since I got lions here. And, well, Chad, when he was here on his first drive, he got lions hunting buffalo right here. I was on the other vehicle. What a way to start your first drive on Juma with lions hunting buffalo but i suppose one of the best ways to start if you are going to be coming out on safari with us here is getting surrounded by a herd of elephants well we are having a wonderful time with elephants it is the same elephants good afternoon to those of you who've just joined us for the adult portion of the drive two hours of Adult content here. <laughs> no, that's, that's not right at all. <laughs> My name is James Hendry and I'm an idiot. On camera is Panda Gilbert Tagudzwa Musesani Glitz the Billions. I, that's really, oh, those are all his names. And we're looking at elephants and you are to ignore me unless I'm talking about biology because clearly I've lost my mind. Now we've been with these elephants for probably, I'd say 15 minutes, maybe more, 20 minutes probably. And it always interests me how you can have a fleeting view of a herd of elephants, but you've got to put the time in with them. If you put the time in with them, it's like they, almost appreciate that you want to spend that time with them and 
they start to just relax and go about their days around you. And it's, I think almost always when I've had great elephant sightings, it's been because I've been patient. I've let them come out from the bush. They stop trying to hide from you. And it's often not a particularly active hiding. It's just kind of they'll put a bush between you and them. And then if you spend enough time with them, look how this one's coming towards us now. They just kind of realize that you're not much of an issue and they stay around, which is very special. Remember to talk to us, hashtag Wild Earth on the tweet tweet, or the XX, or on the YouTube, or indeed on our website. Questions, comments, general banter, you might even use the platform to shout at me. Uh, some, some of you have definitely felt the need to call, call me out on various things in often very strong terms. <laughs> the latest was around my mistakenly identifying the young Talamati male lion. Uh, I called him the Msutu male because the pride that he came from is now uh, called the Msutu pride. Um, but it wasn't when he left the Pride, I'm told. So thank you for that information. It was delivered with great vehemence, but I've got it straight in my head now. Back to the elephants. We're now faced with a wall of grey. Fancy playing safari snaps? Or showing off your photo skills in fun competitions? How about sneak peeks of our brand new camera spots and live chats with fellow Africam fans? Well, Africam All Access has got your back. Just head to Africam's YouTube channel, hit the join button and select Africam All Access. You'll unlock Africam premium website perks and all the VIP benefits of our YouTube memberships. there's another big cow who's just moved off towards the left and I think she was pregnant now if we look at this one let's wait for her to come out Panda can you zoom in on her head there and you can see that the 
flesh around her temples is pretty sunken, and that's a sign of age. So she's an old girl. Yeah, I think she's pregnant. You see how swollen she is just in front of her hips. That's a real mama, that one. Hmm. Beautiful. one there just seeking a bit of comfort probably from mum <laughs> we're sitting here and we've got some beautiful giraffe and they're just enjoying this beautiful warmth. Lovely, isn't it? Well, these are giraffe. We had them this morning, and we thought we'd come back and see what progress has happened. But not very much progress. They've obviously been feeding in and amongst this area. Not as many as we saw this morning. Um, at the moment, I can see four. I know there's probably about five or six here. There could maybe a bit more. The others are probably hiding and have probably moved further off into the bushes. It does look like they are moving towards a giraffe road, funnily enough. With lots of tall trees for them to feed on, especially on that road. And um, it is an area where we do find them sort of quite often and uh, I think that is the reason why that road was given the name to Rolf Road not a lot out, not a lot out sorry on the open flat this afternoon fairly quiet really I'd hoped that there would be a black-headed heron a pale taunting gossel or a common buzzard somewhere on these fields, but I haven't seen, oh, I haven't seen the birds of prey here in quite some time, and I'm starting to think, has something chased them away, or they've just moved on? Black-headed heron, I saw one this morning here, but I've not seen the pale taunt in Goshawk, or the, Common buzzard. I don't know why the bird's name just snuck out of my head for a second. Most of these giraffe are still feeding, but there are some giraffe that are not feeding, like that one. This one is, well, chewing most of its food. Carmel, indeed, indeed. And this, indeed, this is the one that does look a little bit pregnant. She is gorgeous. And she is just chewing all of her food. If you look carefully, I mean, it is a bit far away, but the, the, the small, the, the small little movement might be able to be picked up. You'll see when she swallows that next bit of food and she regurgitates the other bit. So giraffe are four chambered stomachs, which means that they eat food quickly, swallow it, it goes into the first chamber of their stomach. Then when they're standing here like this, enjoying the sun, they will regurgitate what has been inside the stomach of the giraffe in the first chamber. Okay, here we go, here we go. Now this could be it. I oh, know, she's still chewing. Uh, now, generally, she'll regurgitate what's in the first stomach. She'll chew it like she's chewing now, and then when she swallows, it'll go into the second part of the stomach, where the majority of the digestion process will then start in, obviously, stomachs two, three, and four.
you can't chew that piece forever. Well, not that piece, all of that food forever. She's got to swallow it. Yeah. We're going to send you now back over to Juma, to Steve. Wow. Thank you, Eric. Signal is looking good. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five lionesses and a big male lion. Look at this guy. Who is this? He's a big boy. They all got up for some reason. I don't know if something's coming down to the water. And we can't see now. We've come all the way around the other side. But who is this? This is a big male lion. Oof. He's an impressive boy. Everybody's looking quite full. Hello, my boy. Perfect timing, everyone. They all got up just before. We can't see what's around the corner there. I feel like maybe something came down to drink or something is coming down to drink. But they probably just had a look and was like, oh, first of all, we're full. And second of all, it's probably too big for us. Watch the plop down. First, he's going to do some. Oh, there it is. Oh, nice and slow. <laughs> Big impressive male lion that everybody, I don't know who it is, but five lionesses and him, very full bellies. What could they have fed on? I don't know. We're here at Buffalsook Dam and we, we're going to have to go and have a scratch around just now, see if Maribus is around that area. I know James had him this morning, a couple hundred meters away from this area. It's a very full lions. You know, obviously they might have eaten something quite large nearby and then come down to drink. They weren't here this morning. <laughs> Leopard Queen, lovely lions indeed. Anybody know who this boy is? I think we had quite a good shot of him there. I don't know who he is if he... He looks a bit old to be one of the Kambula males, but I don't know. Doesn't look to be one of the black dams, that's for sure. Wasn't limping. There were some new males on Chitra a couple of days ago with Jims. <laughs> that he never got to actually broadcast because the signal was bad. And I was really thinking, I was really thinking that um, we weren't going to have signal where we are, but we do. Hooray. Viewing them from quite some distance away. Really wasn't ideal, was it, Mpul? Definitely wasn't going to break the internet with those long distance shots. I don't foresee them getting up to too much with their full bellies. You know, they've, uh, they all moved a little bit before, I think, maybe because of the sun. They're in a really nice, cool, soft, cool bed of, of soil and vegetation. Full bellies, water very nearby. Absolutely nothing for them to do this evening, except maybe groom a little bit and digest. Well, let me just move over here. I don't know what she's looking at over there. She's looking at something. Get another angle. Hey, Forty. I do not get nervous, no. 
I've spent a lot of time with lions on foot. A forty. So in a vehicle, it's uh, very, very relaxing for me. And Port, tell me when you're happy. Shop like that. Okay. Okay, I don't see anything. I think they're looking at that heron. They're like looking at the heron on the log going, I wonder how much practice it requires to balance. Oh, they're looking at the crocodile. Goodness gracious, that's what happened. <laughs> that's what they're looking at. They all took a few steps backwards and have been checking him out. Now that's why we call them flat logs, everyone, or flat dogs. You don't always see them, but there he is. The lions know all about these guys. Goodness gracious. And Paul, how about you? Are you still getting nervous these days with the lions? Uh, no. Only when they look at you. You're okay. Only when they look right at you or that time when Dark Mane looked at us and ran past the car. Times like that definitely get Mpoh a little bit nervous, but for the most part, Forti, he's doing really, really well. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature while giving you access to lots of our amazing content. quite something seeing a crocodile lion standoff. Sometimes lions make kills quite close to water points like this and the crocodiles will come out and steal it from them. Uh, very powerful animals. Probably one of the, the videos before viral was even a word. I don't know if you ever saw that video, the Battle of the Kruger that did its rounds of uh, those lions chasing that herd of buffalo and then the buffalo calf getting tackled into the dam and then the crocodile grabbing the buffalo calf and then the lions pulling the buffalo calf back out and then the buffalo coming and chasing the lions off and rescuing the calf. I think that was one of the first videos that ever went viral before viral was even a social media term. Viral was always um, <laughs> a disease 
before that, how terminology changes. Hmm. Kimberly Lopez, you say this is the Kambula, lo the Kambula male, which one of them, I suppose, is definitely not number five. I'm very familiar with number five after yesterday. Three, two, one, action. Right, here is our elephant herd. I don't know why I'm shouting at you. It was because I was saying something to Panda and got a fright when I heard that we were going live. That's the old cow that we were looking at. And while I might use the term old cow uh, to describe somebody I didn't like, uh, that is not the reason I'm using it for that elephant. I'm using it because she's old and she's a female. <laughs> and the rest of the herd is just slowly browsing towards us. And so I'm I've kind of driven round in front of them and we're going to wait for them to emerge through this rather thick wall of Cumbritum apiculatum and Strychnos madagascarensis. Panda, did you know that's how you had to say madagascarensis? You lost. That's this plant here that the um, elephant is about to come through, that one there there. Yeah, that one. Strychnos madagascarensis. Or the black monkey orange. Hmm. Yeah, Sharaf, the first guy to damage the vehicle will take 50 lashes at noon and then be expected to be fit enough to take a drive. Uh, I can make that decision, A, because I am the boss of the naturalists, <laughs> and B, because I won't be here. Because if I was here, it would almost certainly be me, because I am comfortably the worst driver. Here comes another little herd, not the same herd, just a little grouping. Now, I look, these, these vehicles are going to get scratched and damaged. That's the nature of what we do. We just don't want to be the first to damage them. I do think we're going to have to drive them with slightly more care than we've been driving those Land Rovers, though, because, well, it's... They're just so lovely, and we don't want to damage them. And also, you know, I suppose, while well, this is not strictly relevant to the elephants, I do think that it's relevant because it will make us probably drive a bit more sensitively. I don't think we are insensitive with animals, but it certainly will necessitate us being slightly more sensitive, so I think that's a good thing. So they're just slowly coming through this wall of bush. Panda, this strychnos here is being savaged. <laughs> Let me move this tree for you. Elka, was that old cow possibly the matriarch? Yes, I think quite likely. Does that help? Zero point five out of five visual. Okay, let's go back to the other one. Then. And the lovely sounds of them feeding. It's such a peaceful sound. Well, Zim Dutch, in theory, an elephant is able to conceive until the, the day they die. 
the females, obviously. Uh, the males will struggle to conceive ever. And they will live to around about sort of 60 to 65 years, I suspect, here. I think it's unlikely that you'd find they'd give birth in the last five years of their lives or so. But what is important to understand is that they don't experience menopause. So they are not animals that experience menopause. Humans, there are a couple of other primate species and a few whale species that experience menopause, but elephants do not. That's, this one's just a little bit kind of nervous, and demonstrating that he's uh, very strong and brave at the same time. Now, next week is Earth Week, uh, and in fact this is Earth Month, and we'll be doing a celebration of Earth Week next week by talking about the Earth and our role as human beings on Earth, and we'll have a couple of interesting little clips and roll-ins, and then we'll do a fireside chat on oh, at the culmination of Earth Week on Earth Day. So please join us for that. I haven't got out of the car, I'm just ducking out of the way of the camera. Earth Week is a, it's one of these weeks that I think is really important but tends to get ignored because it can be, with all the sort of depressing news around the world, often people just don't want to hear about what plastics are doing to us, but it's so important because Although the theme, the theme I think is plastics and people, or plastics and pollution, or something like that. Um, you know that stuff really does affect these animals. Ultimately, the more polluted the earth is, the more that filters into an area like this. There we go. Planet versus plastics, and the fireside chat at the end of Earth Week will also be on Wild Earth's birthday. We'll be 17 this year. Right, we're going to swap across now. There is another section of the herd that has crossed the road in front of us. Let's spend the next 10 minutes trying to identify the number of species that they're eating, because I'd be quite interested. This one is, this creeper that they eat is being selected for and is frequently selected for. I don't know what it is, but that's one species. We've definitely seen some strychnos going, we've seen some red bush willow going, some large fruited bush willow, so that's four species. Um, sorry, Jared, can we have that question again, please? Oh, hey, Forty, have I seen an elephant give birth? I haven't. I've seen an elephant just after being born. I've seen a cow who has just given birth, but I've never seen the actual act of giving birth and it is something that obviously most people including myself would be fascinated to see um, <laughs> here comes this cow behind us I'm just gonna wait for it to cross I'm not gonna move so the young much younger cow you can see her head doesn't have nearly the same indentations as the other one. I know this is not the best angle, everyone, but they're just being so peaceful and so calm around us. And if I start the engine, this little one's going to freak out. Oh, this is a difficult one, Sarah. Where in South Africa would I recommend somebody come for a first time safari? You know, it really does depend on how much 
That's, thank you, Panda, for the blacksmith lapwings. It really does depend on how much money you have to spend. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello. The Kruger is great, but that's if you want to drive yourself. If you really want the best possible safari, I'm going to describe it after this massive elephant has moved on or killed us. Most likely move on, I hope. She's now a meter and a half from us. Hello, my dear. <laughs> this is so cool. Silver cluster leaf, five species. Now what she's doing is she's searching amongst the grass. So she's pulling out bits of grass, discarding them and then finding something else. I think she's eating Megathesis maximus at the moment. That's the grass species she's going for. Six species. Now oh, she's eating the black monkey thorn, the strychnos modocarsgarensis. This is amazing. She's literally two meters from us. <laughs> now if you listen carefully, you can actually hear her chewing. be able to see this but this is not the first time this tree has been what shall we say desecrated like this it's got a quite sturdy primary trunk and then a lot of these sort of less sturdy secondary ones that have grown out of the main trunk and that's because this has played out three or four times in this poor silver cluster leaf's life. Quite entertaining, wasn't it, Panda? It was very entertaining. You loved it. Right, so back to the qu question about. Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs>
Right, welcome back to those of you who've just rejoined us. While we look at this elephant relief itself, uh, I am going to describe the best place in South Africa. I think you should, if you want to go on a safari. Uh, it, like I say, it really does depend on the amount of money you have at your disposal. If you are flush, um, I would the first place I'd go is Londolozi. Um, I think it's just a, it's a spectacular experience all round, hospitality-wise, game-wise, uh, everything-wise. Um, so that's just down the road here, but that's not for everyone's budget. <laughs> Certainly not mine, um, and I'm very pleased that I, I worked there. Uh, oh, um, there seem to be two elephants that are having a bit of a fight down there. Let's carry on moving. So, I mean, I think if you're going on safari in South Africa, what you do want to do is reserve if you can just because while you can drive around the Kruger on your own and that's a wonderful experience and many Africans do it and I love doing it it's not for a first timer if you're not going to come back and you're not going to do it regularly you know it, it doesn't you, you could see nothing it's possible you could see nothing but if you go to one of the private reserves the chances are good that you'll get a good guide and then you'll be able to see things and you know they can drive off road a bit and help you and that sort of stuff so you know it, it is so dependent on on your budget so these two here Pandora are having a bit of a fight there we go now we can see them <laughs> If you're seriously wanting to think about travel, then just send an email to travel at wildearth.tv and we'll give you some advice. Travel at wildearth.tv Somebody expert will be able to give you some advice based on your budget and expectations. Blue Jay Fly, what was that? You didn't get that. Blue jay fly, I'm sorry, my radio comms are breaking up a bit, but basically you're asking about lady elephants, the gestation period, and saying that you wouldn't be able to, as a human being, carry something that big for that long. Uh, you actually do, if you've had given birth. You carry something proportionately, I think, a bit bigger. And possibly not for as long, because their lifespan is the same as ours. But an elephant, when it's born, they're 100 kilos, and 100 kilos to... Let's say the average car is four and a half tons. Um, what's that as a percentage? Ten over four hundred and no, a hundred over four thousand and five hundred, which is one. Yeah, that's easy. It's one over forty-five, so it's a forty-fifth of the mass of the elephant. Is that correct? Yes, my maths is correct. And a human being, um, well, let's call it three kilos. Well, three and a half kilos is a big baby. Three and a half kilos is a big baby. And let's say the average woman, do we do pre-birth or post-birth? Let's say somewhere in between. So let's say let's say a fairly large, not fairly, I don't want to get myself in trouble here. I'm going to say a 70 kilogram woman and three and a half kilograms, that is one twentieth. So you're carrying, proportionately, you're carrying a baby that is double the size of an elephant if you're a human being so bear that in mind and it is why a human being about to give birth looks substantially more awkward or has a much more difficulty moving around than a an elephant that's about to give birth so i i hear you uh, i will never experience it myself mercifully but i hear you and I think that while you are saying it's harder for the elephants, I suspect quite strongly that it's harder for human beings. And certainly the process of giving birth 
is way harder for humans than it is for elephants. Right, the Vov is also somebody who will never have a baby, uh, not on account of the fact that he doesn't want to, but on account of the fact that he's a man. Let's go and find out what's happening with his elephants. Not his elephants, his lions. <laughs> I was really interested to see where James is going to go with that one. <laughs> Talking about babies. James, or Jimps, as he's commonly known around camp, eh? Jimps, Jimps, or James. Now, everyone, we've repositioned, get a bit more of a view of uh, our sleepy cats, and a nice angle of, of Bufusuk Dam as well, with our crocodile. I don't know how that light's going to look. Oh, it looks very pretty. It's a bit dark, but it looks very, very pretty. Are you going to change something? Do you need to change something? Yeah. You're good. Ayoba. Mm. Peaceful moments with some big cats. How is your Wednesday afternoon, everybody? Mine's is pretty relaxed. <laughs> Great camera work, full indeed. Great camera work with our big crocodile. I mean, you would overlook him, wouldn't you, if you weren't looking? We didn't even see him. I was looking for some general game on the other side of the water hole there. I was looking for a buffalo. The lions definitely weren't that keen. You know, I saw the male lion have a look and he like moved away and that was like, okay, what is it? What is it that he's seen that he's not so keen about? And they probably had a nap and they woke up and saw a crocodile 30 yards away and thought, goodness gracious, I think we're gonna move a little bit further away from the water. As is uh, a normal. I also would have moved further away. Now they did find uh, some more lions, if James was interested. I don't know if he was on the radio, but they found three more Nkuhumas and that young Talamati male around Gary Cutline, if James was interested to go there, if his elephants are disappearing and he's looking for something else to do this afternoon. One of the vehicles from the west that was on their way here were uh, on the way here and they found their own lions. So that's what happens. I know James saw one of them this morning, full. Or oh, the dam cam. We saw one on the dam cam this morning. We never managed to find them. girl this made your day fantastic definitely made our day there's James on the radio he's interested with the lions These were, <laughs> these lines, how they all spread out. It almost feel like a hand grenade was dropped in amongst them and they were just lying down flat. Stun grenade. Okay, copy it. Oh, that's a full belly at the back there with some, that's an adult, certainly. There, the male's reaching out, just going, hello, my dear. Circle of lions, TBD. Indeed, a circle of lions. I 
You see how full they are? They're struggling to... Oh! <laughs> They're struggling to get up. I wonder if one of them is in estrus because he's... She moved and he's up. That's a typical sign of a lioness in estrus. Cedric's probably going to fall that one. So, full lions, full bellies. I might just take a quick moment, put on my jacket. Amazing how in just the last three weeks the weather has changed. I wasn't wearing a jacket in the evenings. When I got you, now in the mornings I'm wearing two. Albeit this morning I didn't really feel like I needed it. <laughs> so we are on a bumble at the moment. We are we actually crossed back over. We are now on the the, the territory called Ama West, where our three amigos and the Art Wolf reside. Now, 
I'm going to tell you a story. And this story, the title of the story is Morgan and Eric's pre-dinner meal. My goodness. The amount of flies that we have consumed in the last 20 minutes, maybe less, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes is more than enough. We don't actually need to have dinner after this. We've had far too... Oh. So, little backstory. At the moment, we're dodging these little... the word swarms plagues they are little swarms probably about that big but we're calling them the plague at the moment because goodness gracious these little muchies this is what we call them in South Africa but uh, they're actually little midges we're not actually too sure exactly what they are where they came from and why there's so many of them but um, yeah uh -uh. They, like we thought that we were in the in the clear on our way out of the main reserve we probably drove through about a hundred different little swarms little plagues of them and they were not small swarms um, uh, they were big swarms I had some go into the back of my throat it's talking too much <laughs> and, and then I ate some earlier so if I look at the camera and you see some come out my nose, please don't be alarmed. They are everywhere. They've even tried to go into my ears. Uh, and this is, I don't know if it's caused by the heat, if it's caused by the amount of water that we've had all over the place. I can see some that are not on the lens, but they're on the outside of the lens. There's one that thinks he's abseiling off the front of that thing. <laughs> Well, Morgan's just going to give it a bit of a wipe so uh, our unwanted guests are no longer on top. So, uh, yeah, that's that's been our story for the last... <laughs> two, what feels like 45 minutes. It actually probably has been 45 minutes to an hour. It started when we left the waterhole. It actually started before the waterhole. And these are the same ones that we had dying on our bonnet uh, not too long ago in a sighting. I can't remember where, when it was. I think it was last week. Definitely sometime last week. But um, yeah, no, these flies are a bit of a nuisance. And uh, I'm not seeing any birds munching on them. Maureen, there's no need. There's no need to feel sorry for us. We've already had our we already had our dinner. We're going to have a second meal after this. So we're good. We're dealing with it. Um, it's the, uh, obviously glasses is a must. <laughs> yeah. I think I should get myself a pair of reading glasses or something because hey, goodness. Oh, goggles. I need those goggles that Steve wears. That will probably be great for this situation because my goodness. It is bad. It's and we thought that once we crossed through the tunnel, because uh, there's a tunnel in between the two reserves that we used to get through, there weren't any. Uh, Darcy, yes, yes, at least we got our proteins. We are all stocked up to the brim <laughs> with protein. But, um, you yeah, know, we thought we were in, we were, uh, in the clear, because for just short of a kilometer, on this side of the property there were no flies there was nothing there was only little insects that we could just see every now and then flying around and uh, we thought that well we thought that that was our breakthrough were we wrong <laughs> we were very 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 wrong and um, yeah so, well, that's what we're dealing with at the moment so far it's not as bad as it is on the main reserve but I, I, it's getting there and um, now like I said I don't know if it's the heat that we've had today because it's, it's not just today that we've had the flies if it's a change in the season it seems very weird for flies to be coming out or midges to be coming out at this time of the year for a change of the season or is it the amount of water that's fallen and there's just been lots of eggs that have been laid, that have hatched. Is it the grass? It's because it's all nice and green. Or what it is. And funny enough, we haven't seen very many birds. I, I, 
I would have expected our pearl-breasted swallows to be on the job here, eradicating all of these swarms, but clearly not. There's no fiscal flycatchers, there's no common fiscals, there's, you know, there's no anteating chats, there's no pearl-breasted swallows, there's no uh, uh, rock martins or any I don't know where they are. These birds are not interested. I mean, I didn't think that these little insects are poisonous in any way. Yes, yeah, they're bothering Morgan now. <laughs> The swarms are horrible, and they have to dodge every now and then. Mm. Anyway, at the same time, we will try and keep our eyes out for our three amigos and some odd wolf. All right. We are going to send you to watch a clip now. Of, uh, this clip is of Steve during our virtual safari. So it was either Monday or Tuesday that they would have done this. But uh, have a look, CV. You must remember that this is not live content that we'll be giving you now. Um, well, let's have a look. Good afternoon, good afternoon everybody. We are out again this afternoon to go see what we can find. And towards the end of drive this morning, a few lionesses were found on Gary Cutline from Gary Dam. So we're going to go check them out. My name, of course, is Steve. I'm joined by Paul. Join us for the ride. Let's go find some big cats. Lion cuddle puddle wake up time. One lioness moved off the young one, I think Amber Eyes' daughter with the brown eyes. And then she came back and was like, come on ladies, it's time to wake up already. And now the grooming begins, the preparation for the evening. Okay, everyone, so we've decided to pull out from the lion sighting. Our three lionesses, we ended up seeing the third one, very flat. They're not going to be getting up too much for now. So let's go and have another little scratch around. Maybe go and pay a little visit to the area of Maribs, see if there's any interaction with him, his tree, his food, maybe the Queen Talamba. You never know. their way to the dam as anticipated. Perfect timing. We just went uh, to follow up on Maribs and uh, we, we found the carcass still in the tree but no sign of our boy. I'm sure he's around there. James had some good action with him this morning and we met up with the Sabi Sands people as well. They went in with us to have a look so they're very interested to, to see the progress and to find out how he's doing and really like to get some photographs of his chest to see how that wound is faring with regards to those sutures. But uh, here we are, a small 
herd of elephant at Buffersuk Dam. Well, a nice afternoon with some lions, some ellies. Didn't catch up with my lips, but uh, we'll do some more efforts tomorrow. Uh, it's been nice to be out and about, and uh, well, we look forward to getting out tomorrow morning. I hope you've enjoyed this afternoon as much as we have. Hmm. Welcome back, everyone. Splendid moments spent on Monday afternoon. It was a nice afternoon out. Our flat cats, though, have not moved. They lifted their heads slightly and moved around very slightly because the crocodile moved. They all got a little bit... Mm, let's figure out what's going on. And they all put their heads down again. Now that crocodile is gone. He's vanished. You might hear the sound of another vehicle. We finally were joined by someone who eventually made their way in. Good luck. So no one seems to know where these lions came from today. Maybe they were in Buffalsuk. Maybe they were in Torchwood. Most likely weren't in Juma. I feel like they're going to be in and around and close to this area tomorrow. Full bellies, beautiful view, lots of water. But he, well, he's able to climb the tree, so, you know, by the, the state of these animals' bellies, they've eaten more than just the impala that they took from, that they could have taken from him if they did manage to get up that tree. They've fed upon something far more substantial than the remains of, of his impala, or his dagger leg, as James said this morning. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature, while giving you access to lots of our amazing content.
A lot of the time, these guys aren't really that keen to stay very long anyway. So there's not a huge amount of pressure, uh, unless there's big action. Yeah. What's your... Shop. My mic is on this side. Shop. Sorry about that. <laughs> Something happening with my audio, everybody. I do apologize. Cables. We need some wireless mics. Linda Poli, it is Whiskers Wednesday. Perfect Whiskers Wednesday. I forgot entirely. We went out this morning to try to find lions and we, we didn't have any luck, really. The Safari Sentinel failed abysmally this morning. I suppose it's not always about the tools, it's about the <laughs> ability of the guide. And this morning, well, we just really didn't have it. We tried our best, we had tracks. It was quite a quiet morning on the western front of Juma. So I wonder if these lions were in and around this area the whole morning. It's quite possible. I mean, James was in this area. He did check up on Marips, Marips eh, this morning. But where these lions are now, you wouldn't have seen any tracks of them coming in. And if they were the whole time, it would have been very tricky to see. Anyway, talking about Whiskers Wednesday, let's go have a look at Tlalamba, who was trying to give Maribs a little visit in the virtual safari. She's getting back down towards the tree where Maribs was. We'll wait here for now. Right, so that was an amazing little scene that we had, Panda and I, on Monday. And a magnificent view of Tlalamba, and she took us straight to Maribse. Uh, there's something teeing off here. We've got two hyenas, one of which has just walked past here, carrying what looks like the skin of a buffalo to me. Oh, hang on, there's a lion there. There's a lion. Look, there's a lion coming out of the grass, and it's going to try and steal something. It's going to try and steal the skin from the hyena. And then this buffalo has been distinctly displeased to see us. Wow, that's cool. Now this is the lioness that must have been around this morning that we couldn't find. And I think that between the lioness and these hyenas, they finished off something down in this drainage line. That's definitely buffalo skin. And I suspect that this buffalo we've just seen running through the clearings here 
arrived at Juma with a colleague and that, that colleague is no longer with us. The lion looks fat, the hyenas look fat. Let's go take a closer look. Wow, that's cool, eh? Very cool. I'm a little skittish of that buffalo because there have been two buffalo around on the next door reserve, that one of which has been chasing cars. Maybe that's the one that's now been devoured. So we're going to get quite close here because we won't be able to see her otherwise. The hyenas have absconded into the drainage line. Say when, Panda. That'll do. Who are you? What is your name? And what is your business? There are a lot of lions around today. Steve's got his lot. There are another four just north of the Bourne boundary. Thank you very much. Some of you identify those two lions as, at least those two hyenas, as June and Comet. Well done. Hi. What a beautiful picture of a lioness. And Shreyas, that was you, unsurprisingly, who identified those hyenas. Thank you for that. Now, this begs the question, where is the rest of this buffalo? And who else ate the buffalo? Because there's no ways this lioness took out a bull buffalo on her own. Well, it's extremely unlikely. Secret Marsh, she'll eat some of the skin, but she's mainly just taking what's left of the meat off there. The hyena calling. What a drive. She's got beautiful eyes. Look at her eyes. Oof. That's beautiful, isn't it? African sunset, you say the lion needs her buffalo coat, it's getting cold. Yes, I mean it'll be an incredibly stinky buffalo coat. Mm, Jared, you want a thumbnail from here? There's not a lot of light here, Jared. We'll see what we can do for you. Oof, it's dark. Excuse the noise scratching on my head. Sorry about that. on safari.
welcome back to those of you who've just rejoined us. Sitting here with Chela the Lioness of the Nkuhuma Pride. And she's on her own. A hyena's just gone wandering past here. Could this be the return, the long awaited, long longed for return of the Nkuhuma Pride to their old home of Juma? Maybe they will spend a bit more time here than they have done over the last little while. That would be amazing. Now, it is rather confusing as to where the rest of this buffalo is. Right, well, welcome again to those of you who've just rejoined us. Panda, what exactly are you doing back there? Uh, Panda's lost a screw for the infrared light. That's what the scuffling about in the background is. <laughs> anyway, Ch Chella the Lioness we have. Thank you for the identifications. Much appreciated. Well, Shreyas, you say that Gingarika, the hyena, was at the, at the, was around before the sunrise safari um, earlier today, and if she, you're wondering if she might still be with the kill. She may well be. Where that kill is is difficult to say, however. Because Chella came through the grass from the other side, from just behind her, so that's really quite odd. Anyway, wonderful to have her. It's hmm, a nice sound. Uh, Canine Geld, I would say the chances are small that she didn't lose the cubs and just moved them, simply because she was hanging around that area and we were pretty sure that she still had them when Cedric had that interaction with her, um, the rest of the pride, and that male. Um, you know, I think she was still lactating then and they were in that area. It's not impossible. It's not impossible at all. Um, yeah. I think we would have, I feel like we would have seen more of her over the last three weeks or so. But it's not impossible. Lots of nice noises. Now, Panda, the infrared light you can't use. Am I correct? What's happened to the screw? Oh, there we go. The infrared light is on, everyone. Chella can't see that. It's only our clever camera that can see that.
Cindy, do you hope for roaring lions soon? That would be great. <laughs> so what she's doing is using those carnassial teeth which don't close on on top of one another but rather to the side of one another and that will just help her to scrape off any meat that's still on the skin. She's looking back towards where the hyenas went The other interesting thing, of course, is that the Steve is with the rest of the Unkahuma pride and K4, who I think is a Kambula male, I think that's what that means, K4. And as far as we're aware, but we don't know this for sure, her cubs probably belonged to the Black Dam males, maybe. Maybe did. And maybe they didn't. Maybe they belonged to one of the Kambulas. That's very difficult to say, such upheaval in the lions. But if they did belong to the black dam males and the Kambula male is looking like he's well settled with the Inkahumas, well, it's unlikely they'd survive. The cubs, I mean. In fact, almost impossible. But, let's see. These lions are particularly poor at reading textbooks and doing what we expect them to. Which is what makes this all so interesting. Well, there we go, Kim. No, we don't. We don't have a dominant male lion on Juma. Remember, male lion's territory in this area is probably three times the size of Juma, three or four or five times the size of Juma. So, at the moment, things are in such upheaval I, until two weeks ago I would have said well probably the black dams um, but they haven't been seen for a while now these Kambula males have come around here but one of them got smacked up by another two males the other day um, or two of them got smacked up by another two males so I don't think anybody knows who's dominant and we were talking you know, two months ago I was here and we were looking at the black dam males and one or two people and uh, a few of my colleagues included thought, well, you know, the black dams are going to take over here. And my only suspicion that they wouldn't was that the fact that they didn't call, you know, night would have, I watched them as dusk fell on two nights in a row and they'd moved big distances and they didn't call, didn't hear them calling once and... I just thought this not the behavior of a confident lion, especially when there's so many other males around. So that was my impression of them. Now remember, this is all just opinion. And the fun of this is to debate it in a friendly and <laughs> tolerant manner. And that's what makes it so compelling. Oh, bless you. Bless you. All right, well, let's pop across to the Vov with the rest of the pride and a Kambula male called imaginatively K4. I believe they're getting up. Hmm. Thanks, James. What epic stuff. The lions are slowly getting their heads up. I don't know what they're going to do. There's one that's right behind us. Had a bit of a toilet break. That's encouraging. 
more of them to have their heads up. But they're all way too full to really want to do anything. I don't know what it is they're going to get up to now. Very impressive male lion, this Kambula number four. set up because everybody else did but he's gonna slowly nod off again we are in the sighting with another vehicle start to get at this time of night. Hmm, early you're hearing all the crickets. Insects. Sounds of the evening. spotted owlet in the distance and some splashing hippos. Is she looking at you funny, Impo? Yeah. funny. Looking right at you funny, eh? <laughs> there we go. That's looking right at you funny, Impo. Right down the barrel. Mm. Make a good presenter, this lioness. Right into the camera. It's a youngster. In two magical African wilderness areas, the Masai Mara in Kenya, the Great Kugu National Park in South Africa, five expert safari guides follow a cast of compelling animal characters and the never-ending stories that define their lives. The Cat Report documents real stories of real predators, as witnessed and captured by a band of obsessive wildlife filmmakers. <laughs>
That's cheeky Shiv. Shiv comments that it looks like she's licking her lips. And Paul just chuckles at that Shiv. It's kind of like a bit of an evil chuckle. <laughs> kind of likes your question, your comment, but also doesn't at the same time. <laughs> How does that make you feel, in Popo? Uh, not a yoba. It's not a yoba, man. Eminently, a furball going to be dispatched behind our vehicle. Like I'm not going to be able to watch it. This female knows that there's danger in the water. The hippos might want to come out. But also there's a crocodile nearby. Let's quickly go to James. Right, there are another three lions coming this way. I can just see their eyes in the torch. In the spotlight they don't really know what to do they're kind of looking this way and it makes me think that they are not familiar with who this is I'm not gonna uh, I'm tempted to just wait right here because I think they've snuck into the bush now to no here they come along the road it's not lions it's hyenas you'd think by now I'd be able to identify the difference <sighs> So I'm sure it is the, I'm sure it is Comet, Gingerika and June the hyenas. And because it's dark, they're now feeling quite confident. Oh, I've got, I've got my heart right up. I was so excited. And I mean, I'm still quite excited, but not as excited as I might have been. Yeah, they're doing the typical hyena approach, which is to sort of egg each other on. We can't park in such a way that we can see them both in this hunt. Turn around. You know what, let me do that. Let me take one minute quickly to turn around and then we can get all of the action unfolding. And you can see exactly what it is that I'm looking at, as opposed to just guessing. How's that, Panda? It'll work, eh? There we go. Nice one, Panda. Nice work there. Nice work. Yeah. I'll just shine the light there so you can see their eyes. Uh, they seem to have moved away, but... Thank you, Happy Brit. I'm not sure what I've done, but uh, you say, well done, James, and great camera work, Panda. I think the latter half of that comment is valid. I'm not sure the first half is. Um, I just drove the car here. I will tell you, however, that the it's very easy to tell that the wind is blowing gently from the north towards the south because now what we can smell is a combination of uh, rotting meat, wet fur and lion breath. It's not something that is going to be put in a bottle for people to spray on themselves. Whew. Quite something. A potent odour. You can see her face is covered in muck. And I wonder if that's from this piece of gunk. In fact, I think it is because her face wasn't dirty when she arrived here.
look at this. Well, it's good. Grumpy old man, you say, could it be a last minute tug of war with a buffalo robe? Perhaps the hyenas also want a robe of buffalo leather with a bit of skin, some ticks and rancid meat hanging from it. There's something very lovely about a hyena call in the distance when you're safe back at camp around the fire or lying in your bed with the window open. It's a glorious sound. Much more glorious than the smell currently wafting towards us. Well, thank you, Happy Brit. You're going to miss my witty commentary, you say. Um, like I say, relatively frequently. Um, that's not a universal opinion. <laughs> but I'm very pleased that you have enjoyed my commentary over the last two weeks. I have certainly very much enjoyed being here. Some will be hooraying that I'm leaving and others will be quite sad. And that's exactly how it should be. <laughs> oh, that looked like a growl, but it wasn't. It was just her with some delicious buffalo hair stuck in her teeth. A bit like me and my coffee grounds earlier on, Panda. <laughs> we have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature while giving you access to lots of our amazing content.
looking around for our art wolf and this is the time that they could be out as well i know we've seen most in fact all of our sightings of them have been during the daytime and uh, when they've been out and about but they are nocturnal animals so we're hoping maybe that the nocturnal animals will do their nocturnal thing and come out you never know there's also the possibility of an art far maybe even a brown hyena you know on this side of the reserve obviously it's just the three amigos that are here so it is uh, uh, there's less pressure on the nocturnal life to come out as opposed to in the main reserve where they know that they have lions they know that they have cheetahs to deal with and occasionally a leopard that could pass through um, so they they prefer maybe not to come out there at this specific time and rather come out maybe at a later time whereas the art wolf here on this side of the property they come out whenever they feel like it the art park and the brown hyena on the side of the property where we can find pumelela they come out also around about this time and like earlier i'd say around about half past four really in the afternoon Right, welcome back, everybody. We are still here with Chella the Leoness. And she's, uh, well, she's just sucking on a piece of old leather, really. An old piece of leather that tastes like lion spittle, rotting meat, and buffalo sadness. <laughs> I don't know if it tastes like buffalo sadness or not. I made that up. Mike smiles. I didn't realize that that's what they say. I, I suspect that you'll find there are a lot of people who didn't realize that that's what they say. And I'm not sure who they are, but everybody apparently, Mike smiles tells me that they say munch on a blanket and have sweet dreams. Now, I've never heard that before, but it's not impossible that it, I've just, it's just passed me by. <laughs> I will try it this evening. I will munch on my own blanket and see if I have good dreams. <laughs> it's getting a bit cold. <laughs> it is getting cold. We're going to have to munch on our blankets soon. Yes, be nice, canine girl. You say this has been a, a lion-tastic drive. Uh, good, good word there. Good uh, use of the word lion there. Uh, just a comment here from Amazon, who says that if James can see three sets of eyes, comet, comet isn't there. So Amazon's talking about the hyenas, and comet has only got one eye. Well, certainly only the use of one eye. And. I did see three sets, so thank you very much for that, Amazon. Comet couldn't have been one of them. Chela seems to be about to have a vomit. Where and why would you move from here? Now let's try and get a look under her belly. Yeah, that's not a lactating female. Definitely not. Yeah. You'd be able, I, 90%, 99% sure, you'd be able to see very clear suckle marks if she was still lactating. The nipples would be far um, more extended and the skin around there would be raw and it would be obviously wet. So I'm going to stand by my assertion that I think she's lost her babies. Which is sad, but it's totally normal for these poor lions. Yeah, it really did, Pucky. You sound slightly surprised by that, but um, I certainly 
Um, I was I had a wonderful time out this afternoon with those elephants for an extended period. And what a way to finish off with the three ha ha hyenas and this Leoness Chela of the Unkuhuma Pride. Elephant shouting in the background. Why are you laughing, Panda? Because you're too bright. Am I too bright? Yeah. I'll do that. Is that better? Not that. No. Okay. So not that, yeah. just to be sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to head back home for supper now. Thank you very much for joining me on my little stint in the bush here. We'll have one last look at Chella, and I shall bid you a fond adieu. And I must say, just a huge thank you to all of you for your support. It's been a rough couple of weeks. So much support, so much outpouring of generosity and love. Thank you very much to all of you. Stay safe and happy wherever you are on planet Earth. Bye-bye.